Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, TFNN, the Option Hour. So, uh, my name is Chris Bolson. Uh, I work here at Thinker Swim, and I'm here filling in. I know that typically we used to have Tom Sosnoff coming in here. Uh, Don Coffin was one. Victor Jones of late. Uh, I've done this a few times. Uh, it, it's been probably about a year or so, I think, since my last visit with you guys. But always enjoy it. Always love it, and I'm, I'm glad to be back again. Um, real quick, I'll throw the number out. So the the number, if anybody's, if anybody would like to call in, we can pretty much go over anything you want, options related here, uh, is, is basically what we're looking for. But eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Again, it's eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Uh, free, feel free to jump in, and, and we can talk about uh, pretty much anything you're you're looking at here. Um, just a little bit of background for you guys, as far as who am I or, or what do I do or what am I about, is I used to be a market maker uh, at the SIBO. Uh, I did that for close to 10 years. Now working on the trade desk here at Thinkorswim, uh, where I, I've kind of expanded a bit more. So still basic options, uh, still basically looking at risk-defined types of spreads, uh, but now also getting into a little bit of futures, a little bit of Forex as well. So. Uh, pretty much anything that comes across, we definitely like to keep it options, though. Uh, feel free to give me a shout, and, uh, and we can answer some of your guys' questions. <clears throat> that being said, uh, just looking at a, a little bit of the news today, uh, big rally today. Big rally as far as just the year starting out. Uh, I think for the most part, as far as talking with people over the last you know, month, two months, whatever the case may be, a lot of people were looking at it as, as kind of what's going to happen. Are we getting to resistance in the, in the S&P? Uh, are we going to break through? Are we going to new highs? What kind of is the deal? I'll go ahead and bring that chart up real quick, the SPX. Um, just right back up in here, this 1275, and we can even go out probably a little bit further than this. We'll look at a year. This 1275, it was support a few different times in the past, and now it was resistance. We've kind of broken through a little bit, um, and I, I feel like coming up to the end of the year, I guess we have the, the little line here telling us when it stopped. It was still kind of that... What's going on? You know, where are we? Where are we going? Is are we hitting resistance? We're going to come back off, uh, and at least it looks like at least initially here to start the here to start the year, we're moving back up. So definitely want to get into some some VIX, some volatility, some option trades, and and we'll all kind of come back to this. What is the general market thinking? Uh, now that being said, Roger's going to go ahead and call in. He's the first one up. Uh, looking at GMCR. What's going on, Roger? Hi, um, hi, Chris. Um, yeah, I was wondering how to trade GMCR. Is it is jumping around everywhere? Um, like yesterday, it was down to 41, then it went back up to 46, and today 48. Now it's back down. Actually, I have its puts, uh, 45 puts, and I'm wondering if I should hold on to them or just sell it. You know, because even at the loss, because it's, it's for the month of Jan, and it's very undecisive. I cannot tell. Like. Even though I look at well, the chart, suddenly it goes up, and then it's, it's coming down. It's jumping around basically everywhere. So you're long the January puts right now, right? That's right. So it's, it's a really interesting one. And when you're looking at a product like GMCR, and this is going back a year, as low as $32 bucks, um, about a year ago, rallied hard for the entire year, all the way to 115 and now it's, I mean, this looks like a mountain here, straight to the top and then all the way right back down. GMCR, in my opinion, is a very difficult one to look at. And for the, the main reason is it's, it's, a, it's a coffee company. Obviously, they have a lot to do with, you know, the individual brews and the Keurig and things like that. There aren't really any barriers to interest. So this whole kind of rally to the top side really kind of surprised me in the first place just because it felt like it was such a strong company. And, and you probably, in, in the same way, you see the, the fall back down to earth. And, of course, that's why you got a little bit shorter, right? That's the problem. Right. The problem that you now run into is you have the 45s. We're right at the strike, and what do we have? A week and a half to go, right? That's right. So it's, these things are probably not terribly expensive, but they're going to zero. Let's get that a little bit more reasonable here. They're going to zero if you don't do anything. So I mean, a buck fifty right now, not crazy. It's not the end of the world. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you probably paid a little bit more than that, especially if you did it over the last week or so. That's right. But it's really a spec play. So, I mean, I would look at a chart like this, and if I'm looking at this chart as a whole, and even more specifically as if, if we're looking at this, that's a scary-looking chart. 
You know what I mean? It looks like it looks like it's coming back down to, to earth, and it's and it's not done yet. Every every kind of trend here is gap up, gap up, gap up gap up and then on the way down the exact opposite gap down gap down gap down and then you know another gap down so you still run that that potential of, of having a great win if we really kind of fall off the cliff again but it could be an expensive week and a half you know I what i mean I, I i tend i tend to not have long option positions with this short of time left unless i'm just purely taking a shot you know, if I'm looking at a weekly, there's two days or three days, and I say, okay, I'm going to buy this option for 50 cents. It's either going to zero or it's, you know, it's going to something huge, two, three, four, or five dollars. I'm willing to accept losing the whole thing, but if if you're really just taking kind of that directional play, there are better ways to do it. And that long, that long, uh, or that that short theta that you have right now, that time decay that you're paying, that's going to be it's going to be painful. If nothing happens, even if we drift slightly lower. It's going to be a bad trade. So there's right. two things I would be looking at. One, rolling that into something, like if you're looking at a little bit more of a longer term, one month, two months, three months out as far as this coming back off, I would say maybe maybe look at pushing that trade out a little bit rather than having that, that accelerated decay as we approach expiration. Okay. Or look at playing a little bit more more directional without having just a straight long option reduce your exposure a little bit whether it's whether it's sell another put that's a little bit lower strike against it whether it whether it's sell a call spread maybe to the upside look to take in some sort of a credit to offset you know your long decay that you have in this position okay so we can yeah. we can look at a few different ones and I'll, I'll i'll go ahead you can go ahead and check out if you want to listen i'll throw up a few examples as far as maybe a little way to reduce your your theta position and, and try to make this into something a little bit more reasonable, take some risk off the table. Okay. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much, Chris. Anytime, anytime. Thanks for calling in, Roger. Sure. Bye. So, so we'll go ahead and look at, and here's the, the exact position that Roger has on, right? He's long these 45 puts. They're worth about a buck fifty right now. As we rally and as time goes by, those puts are going to look worse and worse. Now, the good thing is there's still time. You can still do something. And, and if you're still taking a position, looking here at the chart, maybe you say, well, 50 is, a, 50 is a cap or something along those lines, you can sell a call spread even against this thing. You know, say 50, 55. It's not taking an extreme amount of risk, but if you can take in 82 cents credit and offset this dollar fifty you paid, well, even if nothing happens and we stay perfectly still right here where we are, rather than losing that dollar fifty, now you're only losing about 75 cents that becomes a little bit more easy to stomach, right? When you take some of that risk off the table, put a little bit of cash into the account. The big problem here that we're running into is there's only a short amount of time left. There's a week and a half, right? The big fear is what happens if you're completely wrong if you did a trade like this and it just goes flying higher. Of course, now you lose your dollar fifty. Now this spread that you sold for $0.80 cents goes to $5 and, and you end up losing more uh, than you than you even started, than you ever you ever meant to get into. So be aware, obviously, of that upside risk. And here you have defined risk, but it's a long theta trade. I'm sorry, a short theta. It's a long option trade. One of the other things that you can really look at getting into is is set a reasonable expectation for yourself as well as far as far as where do you think the stock is going? If you think that that time frame is still acceptable to you, say a week, week and a half and you think that, that Green Mountain will go lower, how low do you expect it to go? I mean, here it's, it's almost $2 above the strike. You need another $1.50 below that at expiration just to break even. But say you're thinking 43 or 42 well, The other thing you can always do is feel free to short some options below it as well. Maybe we're not going, you think we're going down to 43 or 42 and that's really what you're hoping for. There's nothing wrong with necessarily selling some of these options against it, right? So look at this. If you look at this whole trade, and this is looking at it right now, essentially, if you got in right at this point. Uh, and, Roger, I know you got in a little bit higher, paying more than a buck fifty, but you can essentially offset almost that entire trade right now in terms of prices by selling this downside put, collecting you know, about $0.55, cents, as well as selling some upside risk as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. We'll analyze what that looks like 
And here's essentially what you have now having this entire position on. You still do great, and we'll go ahead and, and reduce the size. Uh, we'll leave it on 10 just because I don't want to do them all. But basically, you look here, is if we move down, you're still going to win on this trade. And you can kind of set some reasonable expectations as far as how far down do you think we're going. It's still a winning trade if we move down here, right? If we set still, it's not nearly as terrible to kind of stomach as far as losing a dollar fifty. Here you're only losing this fifteen cent debit that you actually paid to put the entire trade on. The big risk, and, and you don't want to just ignore it, of course, is what if we go higher? And there's a, there's definitely significant risk if we go up here because uh, you you essentially you paid money for this spread. Now the risk is is the full width of that upside spread plus the amount you paid. So essentially 515 is what you're risking here. This is something I'd say it's not for everybody, but it really depends on how strongly do you feel about GMCR 1 going down. If you feel strongly about that, it's not nearly as bad being long that option. But if you think really the main thing is we're either going down or we're setting still, this is something maybe you look into. If you think either you're hoping we go down or we're flying back to the upside, this isn't a trade for you. That's, that's not the position you want to put on if that's really your thought process. So really kind of gauge what are, your really, what are really your expectations for the marketplace, then put something accordingly. But the, the big thing, Roger, that I would recommend to you is don't hold on to that position just hoping we move back down. That's the worst thing to do is, is hoping a trade wins, um, especially if you're paying theta, and especially with this little time to expiration without really having any kind of like stimulus to get it there. You know what I mean? The, uh, the one thing that myself and I think a lot of traders, you find that you're pretty good as far as picking a direction or picking, a, picking out trades over a certain time frame, let's say one month or two months, right? You can play your position or, or move, uh, move into something that you really feel strongly, whether it's technical-wise, fundamental-wise, how you're picking those trades, but you have, you have that time frame, we'll say, nailed down. The problem that a lot of us run into is we start putting on positions. It starts getting a lot shorter in that time frame, maybe now a week and a half, where we're not as skilled. We don't feel as comfortable with those kind of positions. And, and we get into something where it's just we don't feel as strongly about, uh, whether it's the trade or our own ability to pick trades in that time frame. And, and really the, the important thing is if that is the case, one, reevaluate and try to decide where is that trade going over the time period that you're good at picking. And if it's not going where you think, it's, it's a lot of times it's better to get out, roll out, whatever the case may be, but change that trade or change that spread to fit into what you're a little bit better at. So I hope that helped you out a little bit, Roger. It's, it's really about watching that theta. That's definitely something you're going to want to keep an eye on. Uh, anybody else, feel free. Uh, I've, I've got a few things on the docket here, but feel free to chat in. Uh, feel free to call in. I'd be happy to take any more calls any, any of you guys have out there. So, One of the things that, that you know, we kind of started at and what's, what's interesting as far as GMCR, and you see, you see the chart here is it's really kind of coming off getting weaker, right? I've been trying to look at, especially over the last few days, a chart like this where it's really gotten flat over at least the last month or so versus the market itself, which over the last month or so is definitely not flat. Right? We're still kind of rallying up to the, to the higher prices here. And one of the things that kind of scares me about stocks like GMCR that aren't really performing well and aren't really getting, being carried up by the market is if there is a turn in the market, if we do kind of reverse, I feel like those are the stocks that are going to get hit the hardest because they didn't take place in the rally. Obviously, you want to make sure there's some sort of correlation, not, not an inverse or anything like that, but... They're not taking place in the rally, so there's not a lot of strength there to start. What happens if the market gets a lot weaker? Those are the stocks that tend to get, to get hammered as well as far as, as, far as uh, the market kind of turning back around. So it's one thing, one thing, too, looking at these stocks. You want to just keep an eye over the general market. If you still feel like we're going to reverse direction market-wise, I would say watch out for those kind of stocks, GMCR. Uh, type of stocks. One of the things that you definitely want to keep an eye on, environments like this, is kind of the shift or the change in volatility. 
So I have this chart up here to start the to start the session, right? We're looking at the VIX, and you can kind of break this down into two, you know, two very different charts. We'll go ahead and pull this one up. We're almost the entire first half of the year, we're below 22. Everybody see that? Just throw a line in here real quick. And we'll, we'll go a little bit higher, up to about 22 half. So there's the line. You throw something up in here, right? And you see that we're below it the entire time. Go ahead and fast forward to the second half of the year. Now we're above it the entire time. So this is really an important number, in my opinion. It's about 22, 22 half of the VIX. And we've dipped below a couple times, right? We're now below almost down to 20% right now. But it's something that you want to be very cautious about because we tend to be in two very different market market environments, right? In this whole time, the short volatility trade worked really well until pretty much the end of the year. There wasn't a ton of volatility, right? We move back up here, though, and the short volatility, I know a lot of people tried doing that same trade, and we'll just I'm just going to throw out, say, being short, you know, weeklies or two-week options. And you say, well, volatility is higher, so that's the trade to go with, right? But when it sustains this high level, it doesn't always work out that well. And you want to take a look at the time frames that you're investing. It doesn't always work because back here, getting short, say, weekly time frame worked really well. Here you say vol is higher. It's even better to short vol. That weekly time frame, that shorter time frame did not work because the moves were so great that a lot of times to get any kind of credit, it's moving right through the kind of strikes that you're short. So here we are now, and I know a lot of times we kind of look at what's the trade, what's the type of trade. Low volatility, uh, we, look at, we look at getting on, say, like a calendar, still collecting that decay but a longer volatility. And then the higher volatility periods, these like up here, we're looking more so at, say, an iron condor where you're really just trying to collect some of that, uh, that decay as well as being out. So short vega and as well as collecting. We'll get into some more of these. I'd like to pull up some, some examples of trades that really show the differences and kind of plan as far as what are your expectations. Do you think now with a market rally the VIX really starts to fall down back into that lower range? Or do you think this is just a test, market comes back off, and if so, we really start getting hurt as far as the VIX starts popping right back up where it came from? Let's explore some of those trades here. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and check in. we got a call from uh, California. How are we doing here? How are you, sir? Very good. Thank you for calling in. Uh, I don't do options. I don't know, so I don't get into. Uh, uh, is, is, is it okay that if I talk regarding stocks only without uh, talking about options? Yeah, I'm not going to hang up on you. I might, I might dip into some options while I'm at it, but sure, go ahead and spit it out. What do we got? Uh, I shorted Visa V mm -hmm. at 102 uh, on January the 6th. I have mm -hmm. 300 shares, yeah. Uh, where where do you think I should get out? Okay, well let's let's go ahead and look at that. We'll we'll pull up a chart, uh, and we'll look at one getting out, and we'll also look at maybe ways to uh, to get out at least of some of the risk. Maybe not necessarily close the trade. So we'll we'll kind of spread it around and maybe look at a few different options. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So I'm not I'm not a technician, so to speak. All right. And when I try to say that I am, it never works out very well. But Visa is one that I feel like just kind of moves in different ranges over different periods of time, right? And right. it tends to be about a $5 range. So, I mean, we can look here, uh, what is this, maybe the middle of, of October all the way through the, the beginning of December, we have this $5 range, right? Correct. Kind of the same thing back here and even dipping down, but it always it tends to move in that range. So there's a couple things I would look at. You're short at 103, which is basically the middle – or uh, the high end of this range, right? No, we'll it's say 100 to 105. Oh, 102. 102, not 103. Yeah. So what I'd be looking at here is a few different things uh, as far as what's going to help your trade. It's going to be, obviously, Visa coming down into this next range, but more so, what's going to trigger that move down into the next range, right? It's going, to be, it's, it's going to be either something specifically with a stock, and I don't think they have earnings coming up that near, um, but really, it's going to be the market itself, right? So Visa is one that's actually come off 
it's been flattened down over the last couple of days with the market up. So kind of in the same boat as, as Green Mountain as far as if this market turns, if this market comes back off, or even if it goes back, you know, 10 points, 15 points to right where it was and people don't feel as comfortable as, as they do right now or even yesterday, I see Visa doing the same thing, and I see it coming down hard, and then it's almost like, well, where is it going to go? When you see, you see moves like this, right, we jump a few bucks and we're into the next range. Jump a few bucks, we're into the next range. It never just goes into the next range and it's just kind of like slow move up, right? It's kind of a jump. So I'd be watching for that. You don't want to be too close to getting out unless you're afraid of it of a reversal, and that's going to be more so you're going to want to look at some of your own technicals or take advice from somebody probably a little bit better than me on that. But what I notice here is that if it goes down, I feel like it's going to jump down, and you have, you have the potential to make a few extra bucks on this thing. But I'd play it close to the vest because if not, we're still right here on this, on this price level as far as, you know, you look at that line, that's the resistance now, or that's the support. If we go through, it's resistance, but I think if we go through, we accelerate through. If not, we're going right back where you started. So this might be something where you're looking to put on some sort of, some sort of trail stop or something along those lines. Right, um, right. If you're getting into options related now, maybe you start thinking about, about selling some options against this to try and to close off some of that risk and, and try and define this a little bit. No, sir, I don't do options at all. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I've never done it, so it's, it, uh, I don't do it. So something that I don't know, I don't do it unless I learn it properly. I've been doing this for the past 10, 11 years. I just buy Perfect. it. Perfect. So, but here, uh, you're absolutely right. There's a regression line at 99.28. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but yesterday, it gave that conviction. Uh, it gave the conviction a pivot point. But uh, today it did the same thing like yesterday, except in a lower range. Uh, so uh, you're absolutely right. Maybe it will come to that. Maybe tomorrow we'll do the same thing in a lower range. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, it will just cross that five-day simple moving average and start to go up. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. Yep. So, so keep an eye. Keep an eye definitely closer on those. What I'm going to do now, though, is I know maybe this isn't specific for you. I'm going to jump into one quick option strategy as far as, as, far as taking it, looking at uh, reducing some of the risk as far as this position goes. Yes, sir. I know it's, I know it's not going to help you, but we'll, we'll, throw, <laughs> we'll throw a bone to the rest of the guys out there, okay? Very good. I, I listened to that from the radio, sir, so I won't take nobody's turn. I don't Sounds know good. I thank you for the call. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, sir. Bye -bye. Anytime, buddy. So here we'll, we'll look now as far as a quick option position. And this is something that the good thing about options is you, you can kind of get into something. You can cover your positions without really closing your trade, right? So really what he's doing is he's short the stock. One of the things that I'd be looking at in a trade like this is really about trying to capture some of that volatility, trying to capture some of that decay. And even looking at, at maybe a time frame that's not that long, I probably don't want to go out to, no, not three days, but if we, if we go even 10 days, you can look at something. Uh, let's do this. This is the kind of spread that I think might work out fairly well as far as he's already short the stock. Now look at shorting a put option against it, right? So you're already, you're already set here. If you're looking at maybe 97 half is your exit, and you can even take a credit, 73 cents or so by selling that put, essentially, whoops, sorry about that, essentially you have this kind of risk graph. We do move down. That's a little bit better. And if not, say we kind of drift around in this same spot or we're going to move slightly higher, at least you take in that credit, right? It buys you about 90-some cents of, of protection there. Um, I've even seen some people do something like maybe sell that and pair it up with uh, maybe buying an upside call. So you can even sell this put by this call, taking about a 50 cent credit. That gives you some, uh, it, it helps close your position. It helps bring in a credit as well as protect the upside. So if we do go scream into that higher point, you have the protection as well. Um, so that's always something that, especially in times where you're, you're really uncertain, and this is one of them, that, in my opinion, where I'm still kind of uncertain about this market. The opposite direction in terms of this visa that we were just speaking about, but it's really one of those times where you might want to start looking at collaring up 
your positions, right? So let's look at, for the most part, we're gonna, I'm going to go with the general assumption here that, that a lot of us are kind of general market guys, right? We're long, uh, whether it's 401K, IRA, savings, whatever. The general market is long. Buy and hold mentality is still out there. If you have a lot of positions right now and you've kind of been riding this rally up, riding it up, this might be one of the times you want to start thinking about covering some of your risk, taking in a little bit of your credit, and, and really protecting yourself just in case we move down. And the main reason I say that, again, is I'm not convinced just yet we're going higher when we look at something like, like this, the SPX. So I'm going to bring Visa back up just for a quick example as far as what, are we, what am I looking at. And I'm going, to, I'm going to flip the position a little bit here. I'm going to go from the long side. Pretending that you're, you're a longer-term investor, you've bought the stock, you've owned it, hopefully from way down here when it was cheap, all right? This might be one of the times where you're looking at covering some of your top sides. So now we'll look at, and I'm going to do it from the Analyze tab just so it's easier to build this for us here. So we're going to look at long stock, and then maybe to protect a, or to take in a bit of a credit, watch that top side, we're going to sell a call. But even looking at buying a put maybe to, to gain us some protection here, just in case we come, we come off, right? And this is what we call collaring a position. Go ahead and put this in for one time. And you can see you do it here for credit. And this is great for a lot of people that, uh, they don't want to close their position. They're unsure as far as where are we going. Look at what we're doing here. We're selling a call. We're buying a put, still taking in a credit. And now I'm just picking these strikes out of the air. But take a look at this risk profile. If you're right, we still continue moving higher. You have money to make. And 105 probably isn't that unreasonable just considering how high it is up here, and we haven't reached that any time lately, if ever, in, in Visa. So you kind of give yourself some room to grow here without worrying about really closing your position. Obviously, we can go back down. But, of course, if you just have the stock, we're going back down anyway. That's something that could happen. The good thing is, in a market crash, even if you don't think likely, you have some protection to the downside. At some point, it's going to stop the bleeding, and that put, in effect, is really going to save you some cash if we go accelerating down. But in this whole range here where it's basically um, this, this line we have here, this diagonal line, it's basically 21 cents higher than it was without this trade in there, right? We see that? So it basically makes that line jump a bit just because of that credit. So if nothing happens, we stay where you're expected, that's basically what's going to happen is you build yourself in a little bit of credit. This is not a terrible time to start looking at trades like this, especially if you can put in a little credit. And it doesn't necessarily have to be both of these, right? Maybe it's a time where you're just thinking, okay, I'm, I'm looking at exiting some of these positions. Maybe sell that covered call to take in a bit of a credit, especially if you're going to go, say, in Visa, just go up to 105 and you're going to sell that stock anywhere or plan to at 105. This is a great way to, great way to kind of facilitate that exit position. Conversely, if you're just saying, well, you know what, I think volatility is low, I'd like to start protecting some of these stocks that I've really made some money on, with low volatility, those puts become cheaper to purchase as far as just getting into something like that. So obviously we can go screaming higher, and what this does do is cap your gains at some point. So you want to be careful. You don't want to just give them away. You, know, you don't want to go out there and sell nickel options or penny options just to take in a tiny credit and put on this strategy, you want to get paid for covering your, your gains, uh, your potential gains to the top side. You definitely want to get some income if you're going to do that. But this is a decent time to look at it, especially if you're, you're unsure. Now, if you're looking at a chart of just the, the overall market, and you say, whatever, we're getting here, I think we're going higher, we've broken out of this, say, 1275. Let's just go ahead and throw a line on here. Why not? We're doing lines today. Throw that up there. It's support, it's support, we broke through, we gapped through, right? It's resistance, it's resistance. We're now through it. I'm not going to start puffing the chest out and say, all right, it's time to go. Now we're above it. We're going to 1370, kind of like how we did back here. But that may just be the case. Maybe we have broken through. Maybe this is confirmation we're going higher. If that's the case, you want to watch selling those calls as far as how close you actually are. Now, 
one thing that you want to be aware of is what's going to happen if we do actually go higher? What happens if the SPX goes from uh, where it is now at, at 1286, almost 1300, up to 1370? What's going to happen to the VIX? The VIX, conversely, is going to sell off, right? We had a chart of that up a little bit earlier, but you'll see that these are almost upside down from each other. And you see as we continue to rally here, this starts selling off. So it's one of the things that you may be able to take advantage of that I know selling calls, you say, oh, man, if we rally, those calls are going to start hurting. Not necessarily the case in all situations. And I'm going to bring up an example here, and I'm just going to show, um, well, we'll show the 1325s. Why not? I'll just pull something out of the air and see actually what it, what it looks like. So here are the 1325s, and I have the SPX going, all right? What I'm going to do is bring up our theoretical pricing tool. And again, guys, feel free to call in at any time. You see the number posted there. I'd love to go over any kind of specific examples you're looking at. But let's go ahead and bring up this theoretical pricing tool here, right? And you can look and say, all right, well, based upon these levels, and this probably isn't going to work because it's uh, open of the day. Let's put something else in here. This might make a little bit more sense. And... Well, maybe this is why, because of the day that we're on. January, oh, no, January 10th. The thing that you want to look at here is what's going to happen as we rally. And essentially, you can price in some gains here, but you, want, you always want to do is take money out as far as if we start selling off, right? And you can look at, at vol at about 20 or so in the SPY, 21, and take that down. Say we rally another 15, 20 points, maybe we go down to a 17 vol. You can throw something like that out there, whoops, not minus 17, minus 3, and really look at how does that affect the price, the theoretical prices. And, and by doing that, you can see that even if we rally, even if we start rallying with the VIX continuing to go down and time decay coming off as well, you start to see that you can actually make money even on a rally, even with short calls. So I know we talk about this a lot of times. You can be wrong with your direction. You can be wrong in picking your trade, but still make money with options. Because as we rally, what do we just say? Options decay as time goes on, and as we rally, we would expect volatility to decrease. One is just part of mathematical function, and two, uh, just part of people start feeling better, start feeling more comfortable with the market. They're not as afraid. Uh, you know, the old term, the risk barometer, as far as the VIX goes, it starts to decrease. People aren't as worried as they were. So keep an eye on those kind of things, especially if you're looking at, at entering a position for a longer term. Take a look at the Vega. What's the Vega position of your trade? And be ready to account for that as far as what could happen. And it's one of the things why I like collars in situations like this. Because if we rally, you can, still, you can still get some edge, but volatility decreases and you're moving towards a short option, so that could, that could help you out. Conversely, if we sell off, you have protection, you would expect volatility to increase. So really that option, if you're looking at just the delta, you see that that option increases even a little bit faster because now the volatility starts popping a little bit and you're getting closer to your long option. So it's a little bit better protection than it even looks like. Uh, and uh, as far as capping it or, or how quickly you, you might be going against yourself with a short option is even better than that looks like. So you have to kind of keep, keep an eye on that. And I won't get too much into a, we'll say, skew. Uh, that's probably a topic for another day, and I can spend way too much time on that. So I won't get too deep into that. But you want to keep an eye on that Vega and try and keep an eye as far as what you think is going to happen to volatility um, as time goes on. So keep an eye on that, and, and, uh, and I think it's going to help you out for sure. Now, uh, just looking back here in the chat, again, guys, feel free to call in. Any kind of questions, I'm happy to look at, at anything. Um, <clears throat> I know we're talking a little bit about TBT and TLT, and I know the last time I did this, this show, TLT, TBT was a big topic. And I know when Tom used to do these shows, of course, he was huge into getting some TBT trades. Now, 
I'm not going to, I'm definitely not going to try and call myself an expert as far as these go. And the reason being is I remember thinking like there's no way it's going below 40. There's no way it's going below 30. And of course I was wrong and I was wrong and I was wrong. And these things just kept going in my face. So I just want to point out a couple of things as far as if you're trading either one of these. Kind of the big thing that, you know, everybody thought they were a bond expert earlier this year. Because interest rates are zero, interest rates aren't going lower, right? And everybody got on TV and they started touting that. And everybody told their friends, I'm so smart because interest rates can't go lower than zero. That's great. Everybody knows that interest rates aren't going lower than zero. That doesn't mean get long TBT and get short TLT. Because as we learn, what happens if they stay at zero for a long time or we expect for them to stay at zero for a long time? Long TBT can go right in your face and short TLT can go right in your face. So you kind of want to you play that, you know, and it's one of those things where I think this is one where we almost oversimplified the whole thing and said, it's so simple. It's, it's bonds. It's, it's interest rates. It can't go lower than zero. It's a, it's a dummy like anybody can make this trade, and it turns out we didn't know as much as we thought we knew. And this trade I know hurt a lot of people. Now, what I would say as far as playing the two, and we've got TLT as well as TBT up here, is just keep an eye on TBT. I know people who have traded this kind of looking at longer-term plays. It's not a really, it's not really a great short-term, I'm sorry, long-term vehicle for trading. And the reason being is just like any ETF or any ultra-short or, or leveraged ETF, I should say, is you have a decay factor. So essentially that fund, that that um, that product is trading in, in derivative products that may have a decay in it as well, and you would expect that to come out over time. The goal is to be the inverse, essentially, uh, the TLT double on a daily basis. So it's really designed for shorter-term trading. Keep that in mind when you're looking at, when you're looking at different things here and, and really understand that that's, that's what it's for. Now, TLT, I've been trading. I kind of switched from TBT, and I've, I've learned my lesson. I'm terrible at trading leveraged ETFs, so I've switched kind of my process as far as going to TLT. I've actually had some success here, and this is mostly luck because it's buttoned up against, you know, this 120, 122, and it's even gone above it. But getting short right around this level hasn't been a bad thing because, like I said, as far as just looking at volatility, even as we rally a bit, that volatility comes off slightly. And if we go back down, obviously the delta really helps in your favor with the short call and short call spread plays. So I've actually had some success being short about the 120, 121, and then long a few strikes up for protection and kind of playing it. Now, I've definitely gotten scared when we got up here to 125, but we came right back off. I got scared when we got here to 123. Luckily, we came back off. You know, And all of these, we kind of moved to those strikes and came back off. This one, I think I got lucky because I closed my position a few days earlier. But you, you can kind of look at something like this, and there's some money to be made as far as selling those credit spreads. It's worked out at least over the last few months. Obviously, if we really start taking a turn the other way, those are going to work out great. You make your money, but then it's kind of revisiting the whole strategy. What are we looking at getting into uh, altogether? You know, and these are basically all-time highs, right, for TLT. Uh, all-time lows for TBT. Um, speaking of all-time highs, Apple is is another one that's absolutely just screaming here lately. And speaking of Apple, William's got a call here from Singapore. What's going on, William? William just dropped, so it doesn't surprise me uh, from Singapore. So put another quarter in the machine, get back in there. Hopefully William gets back in and uh, we can talk a little bit about Apple. But Apple's Apple's a really surprising uh, company, you look at how well this has performed, and okay, so William's still in, so we'll talk a little bit about Apple. I, I I've been following Apple uh, mostly just because I think it's such an interesting stock. I don't trade it that often, just because it's it's so whippy and it, and it has such an attitude about it, especially when it moves a lot on news uh, a lot of times or rumors of news more so than the news itself. You know, we can talk about Steve Jobs, the unfortunate passing of Steve Jobs, but really the news before that ever happened used to affect the stock a lot more than it actually happening. 
which really kind of surprised me. But Apple, once it kind of came off, everybody, uh, he passed, everybody kind of said, well, Apple can never be as good as it was without him kind of driving the ship. They kind of took a turn down for the worse, and it turns out they continue to sell iPads, and they continue to sell uh, iPods and iPhones and all this good stuff, and guess what? They're still making money, they're still innovating, and they're still moving forward um, as a great company. Now, that doesn't mean go out and buy Apple. I'm not saying, yes, it's time to get in right now, right, at all-time highs, but I'm definitely not going to stand in front of it. This is one of them where, where it's kind of like, do you see the writing on the wall? It can't go any higher? Or is this just a runaway train and, and you're, you're a nut to stand in front of it? This is one of the things where, at the very least, it's intriguing to look at. So one of the things that I, I kind of look at whenever we get into, like, an all-time high situation is where are we going to go now, right? What's next for Apple? And let me just pull up. I think their earnings are, and they are. So they're just after January expiration. So we have about two weeks before earnings. And I think if I, I think that's really the big, the big thing that I'm looking at in terms of Apple. Not necessarily right now. What do I think of the company? Where do I think the brand is headed? But it's really about Apple news. What could happen anytime soon? And Apple was coming higher over the last few weeks, even when the market was coming off. Market rallies, Apple rallies. Market sells off, Apple still rallies. So what I'm really focused at right now is kind of gearing up. This is one of the times where I, I kind of look and I say, all right, we're all-time highs. What does Apple normally do around earnings? You can see maybe a gap of, of 20 points or so as a general kind of move, you know, looking around here. So I would expect maybe the straddle is priced in about that. But what's a little bit different is where the market is. One, we're kind of at that, you know, we just talked, that resistance level we've kind of broken through. Apple is at, you know, it's all-time highs, but right at these other two peaks from just a few months ago, September and October. What happened after we reached those? It really tanked. But if we keep going higher, what's to stop it, right? And this is one of those things where, what I want to keep an eye on is the January, uh, we'll say the weeklies after expirations, so the last week of January. They're not listed yet, but the weeklies after this, I kind of want to see where those things are priced. I can look right now at the February 420s, and what is that, about 30, 33 bucks? You know, if it's moving about 20 bucks at a, at a crack every time there's, there's an earnings report, I'm starting to think, What's the strategy I want to employ? If I start seeing that things are worth, you know, they're pricing in a 30 or $40 move, maybe I want to start looking at selling some volatility on those wings to try and hope something comes in a little bit lower, maybe selling an iron condor, something along those lines. But if I start seeing that volatility lower, that straddle being priced at closer to about $20 or so, I might be starting to look because this is really one of those earnings reports where, I know Apple kind of is, is one of the first. Uh, it's one of the earlier reports. Um, but it's, it never really just gaps and moves because we know most of the news already, right? We know how many iPads they sold over Christmas. We know how many iPhones they sold. All that news is kind of out there. There's so many analysts following this stock, it's hard to find any kind of surprise um, as far as that company as a whole. But... When they give any kind of guidance, what are they expected to do? What are they expected to change? How are they expected to move forward? There might be a few more people listening this time around simply because it's a different voice, and now what's the direction we're going to take post-Steve Jobs? And I think that uh, I, don't want, I don't want to say that people will take it more seriously, but the reaction to that news, in my opinion, might be greater than it normally would be. You know, if people are slightly scared if Steve Jobs says it, if, if guy number two, I don't even know who's in there right now, says it, I'm freaking out a little bit if, they, if they're saying something slightly scary, right? Because you don't have that safety net of Jobs at the, at the head there. Um, so this is one where I'm almost looking and hoping, uh, as far as trading, that it's a low volatility, not expected big move, and, and you can try and get kind of a, 
uh, take a shot. So we talked about I hate buying options on short term. Maybe not the case here because you're doing just that. You're taking a shot. You have to you have to put something on if you're doing it that way that you're willing to lose essentially the entire amount because with that little time to expiration, if we basically sit on it, sit completely still, it's going to be a losing trade, and it's going to be a, a huge loss on that trade as far as percentage of capital loss. But if we get a move and you're right and you got on essentially when volatility was cheap, that could be something that, that could work out that could work out well. But it's it's really something that in my opinion I feel like this one could move a little bit more. Now just in general I feel like a lot of these kind of early earnings could move the market uh, or the market itself could move a little bit more just because, again, we're kind of on, you know, I, I, can't, I can't say it enough, is we're at that point in time where at the end of last year everybody was kind of waiting and saying, what's the direction we're going to take? Where are we going to move? Well, right now is when everybody's saying, here's the direction we're going to take, here's the way we're going to move, right? That's the news that comes out over the next couple of weeks, so... The way the market is now, the way it digests information and reacts so quickly, everybody wants to be first. If Apple comes out and says, hey, everything's great and we're going to be the best ever, everybody's going to be climbing on, on top of themselves to be in first before that move actually takes place, and that's going to exaggerate it. Conversely, if they go the other way, of course, uh, it, it's going to move just as quickly, if not faster, <clears throat> excuse me, to the downside. So... Uh, I would say keep an, keep an eye on it. Set, and this is, this is true for just about any kind of expiration, is, is you want to set a reasonable, ex, I'm, I'm sorry, not expiration, earnings. You want to set a reasonable expectation as far as how much do you think we're going to move. You know, and that's not always the easiest thing to do because you're, you're essentially trying to guess what's going to happen, how good or bad uh, or expected or unexpected is the news going to be. You don't know. It's a completely unknown. Nobody knows. But what you can do is say, did they, do they normally meet expectations? What's the typical move after earnings? And kind of set yourself with general expectations, right? And then kind of go from there. Now, the problem is, what happens when they're different or, or they're wrong? That's when, that's when you can get stung around earnings. So you never want to go in and kind of go all in, we'll say, around earnings. You want to kind of ease in and, and take smaller plays, especially because they only come around every three months. Um, and my personal play as far as earnings go is I never want to put all my eggs in one basket. You know, you have so many things going on every day. You can take a few different plays, and as long as things kind of come in, whether it's priced too low when you're going to hope for a move um, or the options are priced too high and you're going to hope it stays within a range, if you can spread that out around and, and you're right most of the time, generally it's going gonna, it's gonna to offset any of those losers where, where you're on the wrong side of it. But it, it tends to be something that you can get a good view as far as history. Where are we? Where are we going? I'm sorry, where are we? Where have we been? And try and gauge, is it going to be the same? Um, I really think these numbers are really interesting this time around, or at least they will be. Uh, interesting this time around. So really in this one, my personal, if it was just looking at this stock, I'd probably be looking at shorting vol, shorting call spreads to kind of play this this resistance right around this, this level where we're at right now. But with earnings coming just a week or so away, I'm very cautious as far as getting something too tight or too close on that trade. So watch yourself there. One of the things that you definitely – want to be aware of as far as getting into this kind of trade is that gap move or that gap brisk. And this is something where you don't want to act like or you don't want to pretend like you know it all because that's when you get yourself in trouble. The good thing is you can define your risk, but a lot of times that gives us a false kind of sense of security, right? Whereas we say, I can define the risk. The most I can lose is this much. But we kind of say, but that's not going to happen, right? I'll close out the position before then. So we put on a trade bigger than we really want or maybe closer than we really want, and we think that it won't be a max loss because we'll trade out of it quicker and we go flying higher, right? 
I mean, we can look at Apple back here and how many people said, well, there's no way it's going higher than 360. Look at, look at what it did these other times. It bounced right back down. And what did we do? We went 40 points higher over the next few days. So don't think that that kind of thing is impossible. I don't expect Apple to be trading at 470 in a couple of weeks. I don't expect that at all. I don't think it's going to happen. But if it actually does happen, I'm certainly not going to be surprised, and I'm not going to put myself in a position where I'm going to lose all the way up to 470 because we're going into uncharted territory, right? Now, conversely, I personally don't think we're going to be trading 380 or 360 in a couple of weeks for Apple earlier. But, again, I wouldn't be surprised if we take that kind of huge turn. If these numbers we talked about just, uh, just a few months ago aren't panning out the way that, that they thought, or maybe they don't have that same growth that they thought, that turned down where we saw it move down, you know, 420 down to 360. How long did that take? Only a couple of weeks. 60 points in a couple of weeks? without really a stimulus as far as true company news, right? Now what if they come out and they say, yeah, these numbers, we're not meeting those, and we're revising everything lower going forward. That 60 points is going to look like nothing, right? I don't expect that to happen, but are we really going to be that surprised? You know, when you look back, if it's, you know, the middle of the year and we're looking back and saying, wow, remember Apple at 420? What were we thinking? Now it's trading 300. That makes a lot more sense. I wouldn't be surprised to have that situation. I, I wouldn't be surprised, though, either if we're trading over 500 and saying, wow, why, didn't we, why weren't we long Apple? So it's one of those things where when you have a situation like that where there could be explosive growth one way or another, you want to be cautious. So watch that. That's what we always talk about. Define that risk. Don't leave yourself too exposed and, uh, and really try to protect yourself, especially when you think you know exactly what's going to happen. Try to take care of yourself. So... Uh, I'm glad I can take at least a few calls today. William, I'm sorry you didn't get through. I was glad to step in today, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Always glad to, glad to show up, so I appreciate the time. Everybody have a great day and take care.